Another week in the books for Bitcoin. This is Green Candle's State of the Coin. It's a weekly update on Bitcoin, both off-chain news and on-chain data. I'm actually filming this on Wednesday the 22nd. Uh, Going to be traveling all day tomorrow, Thursday. Won't really have time to do it, so I wanted to get it done quickly. I apologize in advance if we miss any big news on Thursday or any large changes in on-chain data. But yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, let's jump into some off-chain news. The first story that we're featuring in this week's State of the Coin newsletter is uh, coming from the state of Texas, specifically the city of Abilene and Taylor County. Uh, they recently partnered with Lancium, which is a Houston-based infrastructure company, and they are going to be building a $2.4 billion data center campus. Uh, it is going to be used for, among other things, uh, Bitcoin mining. So they're going to build some infrastructure here that will be specifically dedicated to mining Bitcoin. Uh, they expect construction of this data center to start in Q1 of 2022, and they expect that the data center will bring $993.4 million in total economic impact to Abilene and Taylor County. So pretty cool stuff. They will be uh, dedicating some land and infrastructure to uh, Bitcoin mining, yeah, amongst other things. It says that uh, Bitcoin mining won't be the only thing that happens there, but it will be part of it. And they're trying to utilize uh, pre predominantly wind and solar, it looks like. So they're trying to be, you know, carbon neutral, um, things like that. That's not super important to me, but uh, that's their goal. More mining news. TerraWolf recently uh, signed a deal to buy 15,000 mining rigs from Bitmain. And TerraWolf recently, in fact, a couple days ago, I believe it was December 14th, started trading publicly on the NASDAQ with ticker WOLF, W-U-L-F. And they'll be, they'll be purchasing 15,000 Bitcoin, 15, Bitcoin mining rigs from Bitmain Technologies. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, so go through and check that out. Yeah, I haven't actually looked at, at WOLF at the ticker, uh, so I don't know how it's doing, but uh, something to check out. Next story is coming out of Russia. So last week we reported on this a bit too. Uh, Reuters last week put out a report stating that the Central Bank of Russia will likely be banning purchases of cryptocurrencies. They are set to put out a report on this. The Central Bank is set to put out a report on this sometime soon. I actually thought it was supposed to be this week, but apparently it hasn't come out. Uh, it's still uncertain whether they're actually going to ban purchases or trading of cryptocurrencies, but they are kind of hinting at it. So, for example, um, the deputy chairman, I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce this name correctly, uh, said, I'll give you a hint. We don't see a place for cryptocurrency in the Russian financial market. So even if they don't outright ban trading cryptocurrency or owning cryptocurrency, it seems very likely that uh, they'll make it difficult to do those things. So probably make it difficult to transfer money onto exchanges so that you can purchase them, things like that. That's where I imagine this is going to go, but we will see. All right, the, uh, well, it's not really our final story, but it's kind of our final story. This is just something that should be concerning to all of us. These new mandates that are rolling out, you know, not only in the US, in places like Boston, New York City, California, but across the world, uh, new mandates, mask mandates, vaccination mandates, they're getting pretty crazy. Uh, uh, one Reddit poster in Argentina says that in Argentina, if you're unvaccinated, you can no longer go into banks. The only way that you can get money out of your account is through ATMs and ATMs do not let you withdraw in dollars. They only let you withdraw in their local currency and their currency is suffering terribly from inflation right now, right? Uh, same thing appears to be the case for uh, Nigeria, and that was reported in September. Bloomberg, Bloomberg reported that in Nigeria, unvaccinated individuals can no longer go into banks. Right? Like it's, it's not hard to see where this kind of stuff goes, right? If you, if if they start to implement um, central bank digital currencies (CBDCs), and they're connected to a hot wallet that you carry around on your phone or something, like <laughs> it's, if it's this easy for them to deny you access into a bank. Wait until they can just flick it, flip a switch and turn off your wallet, right? So this stuff, man, it's getting really out of control. This is really dangerous stuff. Very, very important that you put Bitcoin off of exchanges 
hold your own keys. Do not let anybody access your Bitcoin, man, because these central banks, if they can do it, they'll turn it off when they want to. If you're not compliant with whatever they want, today, today it's, it's COVID stuff, but tomorrow it could be anything, right? We're already seeing how they're responding to Omicron, which is apparently far less uh, lethal, has uh, lower symptoms, things like that. It, it's killing far fewer people, thank God, but uh, when, when is it just going to say, well, okay, we've got this power now, <laughs> let's see how far we can push it. Like that's, that's what governments have done in, in human history, throughout all of human history. So, man, this is just something that we all have to keep our eyes on. And, you know, we, we need Bitcoin to solve these problems more than ever. All right, the last thing that I wanted to cover in the off-chain stuff is just uh, how awesome it is to see Jack Dorsey kind of unchained from from Twitter. Uh, to be honest, I was on the fence about Jack uh, through most of his, his time at Twitter just because they had a history of censorship. And now that he's off Twitter, or not off Twitter, now that he's out of this the CEO position of Twitter, it's nice to see him actually <laughs> using the platform uh, for what it was meant to be, which is, you know, arguing with Anons, more or less. <laughs> so uh, he spent the week kind of bashing Web3 and other cryptos. So it's it's cool to see. All right, going to keep it short for the off-chain. And uh, let's jump into a little bit of the on-chain. Okay, quickly jumping into some on-chain stuff. I'm going to be real quick about this uh, because it's late and i got a long drive tomorrow. Price-wise, we're sitting at about 48000 uh, I've just been hovering in this... 46 to 48, I saw we popped up over 49 a couple times today, kind of looking to breach 50 here, but it looks like more or less an accumulation um, right around the 46 to 48K range. I actually don't mind this too much, just kind of building up some support here. So yeah, I know, you know, everyone was hoping for 100K by the end of the year, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen, at least not before Christmas. But uh, yeah, you never know. You never know what happens. <laughs> right? Bitcoin's a crazy thing. Could could start popping off. No one knows. But yeah, right now around forty eight thousand four hundred and thirty three dollars per Bitcoin. All right, let's jump over and take a look at the stock to flow model. This is something I always like to look at. Um, created by Plan B. I know we talk about this quite a bit in our newsletter, but. This is a, a model that's commonly applied to other assets like gold. So it's commonly uh, commonly applied to precious metals like gold and silver. The, the model itself, Plan B, just took that same model and applied it to Bitcoin. And you can see we're sitting pretty well below the model prediction. So if you look at, let's try to get that last point there. There's December 20th. The stock to flow model has it at 107,000. And again, we're sitting at that... 46 to 48 K range. So we're still well below the model prediction. Um, but if you look back at the halving events, you can see how close price is to the model prediction at those halving events. And the next halving event, which is in, I believe May, 2024. Yeah, like May, March, 2024, it's at 121, 122,000. So again, you know, we're well below here. But based on the model predictions at the next halving, we're at, you know, 120, 125K, somewhere in there. So, you know, I like it. And of course, there's an air band that's not being shown here. And um, yeah, you never know. It could be above or below it as it has been in the past. But again, this is a long-term holding game, right? Like you shouldn't be day trading Bitcoin. You should be buying it and holding it uh, based on its fundamentals. And its fundamentals are not changing, right? There's no hard forks happening. It's not Ethereum. Um, the fundamentals of Bitcoin, the 21 million hard cap, uh, the decentralized, decentralized aspects of it, those things aren't changing. So, you know, it's a long-term game, guys. All right, let's jump over and look at SOPR. This will be the last thing we look at. I gotta start packing things up, getting the dog ready for a long drive is always fun. All right, let's get SOPR. This is the spin output profit ratio. Again, this hard line at one. Not sure what's going on here. All right, there we go. Let's zoom into current current uh, levels. Where are we? There we go, December 22nd. So again, this hard line at one, if it's above one, that means that uh, coins sold on exchanges are being sold for profit. If it's below one, that means they're being sold at a loss. 
Um, and you can see that we're just hovering above and below one. This to me is very bullish. It means people aren't selling. When we hit dips, when we go from 68, 69,000 down to where we are now, 46 to 48, we're not seeing huge spikes, right? So if you zoom back to earlier this year when we had a similar dip like this back here, right? Everyone remembers back in uh, March, April, and May when we were rolling up here in the, in the high 50s or low 60s and then we took a dip, right? People were selling. You see these spikes down here. People were selling at losses. And then as soon as it started to rise up again, we started seeing big spikes, right? So people were trying to sell to get out. But now we're dipping down again. We're not seeing these low spikes, so people aren't selling at a loss. And as we start to inch back up, it'll be interesting to see. What we don't want to see, in my opinion, is a bunch of people exiting the market and getting these high positive spikes. Like, I'd love to just see us continue to hover around one, man. Like, I'd love to just see people holding, holding, holding. So time will tell whether that turns out to be the case as we start to ramp up pricing again. Uh, if, you know, I'd love it if we just saw maybe low positive. Some people exiting, grabbing some money um, as, as coins go up in value, but time will tell. All right, like I said, I'm gonna keep this one short. So that's gonna be the only on-chain stuff we cover today. I'll have more charts in the actual newsletter. Uh, so go check that out on our Substack. Okay, that's gonna do it for this week's video version of State of the Coin. We also produce a newsletter called State of the Coin on Substack. So if you liked this and you want to learn more in written versions, then go check out our Substack newsletter. You can find us at Green Candle Investments. We also put out newsletters on Mondays and Wednesdays, but Friday is specifically dedicated to Bitcoin. We also host Twitter spaces every Friday afternoon. Uh, we usually have the Canadian Bitcoiners podcast, the BTC Gandalf, and uh, a bunch of other great guests. So those are usually a good time. We just rip Bitcoin for 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, speaking of Twitter, go ahead and give us a follow. We're at Green Candle IT. Same handle on Instagram. So you can follow us on both of those platforms. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And we will see everybody next week.